I'm Rob. And I'm Sandy. And this is the Carter Chronicles. Today we're going to go over things to see and do and eat on a day trip to Whittier from Anchorage, Alaska. Whittier, Alaska is about 60 miles from the city of Anchorage. So there are a few ways to get there, train, boat, or car. Up until the late 1990s, automobiles were not even an option. But since the year 2000, cars can now drive to Whittier using the same tunnel as the trains. We had a rental car, so we drove. Plus, I really wanted to drive through the tunnel. But if you wanted to take the train, you can get information and make reservations at the website for Alaska Railroad. And for the budget conscious, a train trip from Anchorage to Whittier is one of the least expensive tickets the railroad offers. And there is no need for a rental car once you arrive. Whittier is so small you can easily walk around the town. To get there, you simply head south out of Anchorage on the Seward Highway. This drive takes you right along the Turnigan Arm and is considered one of the most beautiful drives in all of America. There are several places to pull over and look for wildlife, like doll sheep, bald eagles, and even beluga whales. We've never seen a beluga whale here, but we stop and look for them every time. Also, if you time it just right, you can witness the boar tide. This area has the second largest tide in the world after the Bay of Fundy, and so when conditions are just right, a sustained wave rushes in and people can surf the tidal bore for miles. Along the Seward Highway, we love stopping at the McHugh Creek Trailhead. It's located at milepost 111. There is a $5 parking fee, but it's a beautiful place to stop. You can look out over Turnigan Arm at the mountains on the other side, see McHugh Creek, sit and relax to the sounds of a nearby waterfall, have a picnic, or take a hike. There are a few different hikes accessible from here, McHugh Creek Trail and Turnigan Arm Trail. The All Trails app is a great tool that we use for finding hikes. Be sure to make noise as you walk though. There is a lot of dense vegetation in places and you don't want to startle a bear. About halfway from Anchorage to Whittier is the little town of Girdwood, Alaska. We highly recommend visiting the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center there. It's located on mile 79 on the Seward Highway. It's a great place to see lots of native Alaska wildlife up close, but it is not a zoo. As it says on their website, it's a sanctuary for indigenous animals in need. It's also a place where they do research, educate the public, and rehabilitate animals when they can. If you watch the show Alaska Wildlife Rescue, you've seen the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center featured on there. One of my favorite episodes is when they reintroduced an entire herd of wood bison back into the wild. It was awesome. Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center is also featured on shop49th.com as the nonprofit for March 2021. This is a website started by our friends Adam and Sherry Legg of Leg Life YouTube channel. It was created to highlight businesses in Alaska affected by the loss of tourism that you can help support through online purchases and donations. Now, on to Whittier. To get to Whittier, whether by train or car, you have to pass through the Anton Anderson Memorial Tunnel, which runs under Maynard Mountain. It is the longest combined travel highway tunnel in North America. It was built in 1943 as a railway tunnel to connect Bear Valley to Whittier. Then it opened up to automobiles around the year 2000. To enter the tunnel, you pay a toll of $13 that covers your passage there 
and back. Since it is a one-way narrow tunnel that's shared by both trains and automobiles, there's a schedule to go by. As of right now, cars going to Whittier leave on the half hour from 5.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. and cars leaving Whittier leave on the hour from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. If you don't make it through on the 11 p.m., you will become a POW, which stands for Prisoner of Whittier for the night. So be sure to check the tunnel schedule before going at WhittierAlaska.gov. Welcome to Whittier, Alaska, known as the gateway to Prince William Sound. Whittier is a deep water port that cruise ships can actually dock right there in town. It's a small community of about 200 people, and almost all the residents live in a single building called the Beggage Towers. Yeah, that's right. Everyone in town lives in the same building. The building has all the town's utility offices, a post office, police station, church, general store, grocery store, and even a hospital. In fact, there is a tunnel that runs underground to connect the tower to the local school behind it. So we actually started our visit by walking along Whittier Creek, which is located directly behind the Beggage Towers. Whittier Creek is formed by the melting Whittier Glacier that's located high above in the mountains. Now, as we followed the creek all the way down in the town, which isn't that far, we did some shopping along the harbor. And there are some really unique little stores to check out there. After walking around, shopping, and exploring the town, it was time to see some glaciers. Up close and personal. There are a couple of companies in town that do ocean jet skiing, but we went with Glacier Jet Ski Adventures for their safety record, their equipment, and them. The website is impressive, but after talking to them on the phone, I knew we had made the right choice. It's owned and operated by Charlie and Rebecca Howard, and they could not have been more accommodating or nice. Charlie is a lifelong Alaskan resident and is so proud to show off his beautiful state. Now what we really liked is they keep their groups really small. So you get to do a lot during your four to four and a half hour exploring tour. And the tour is over 60 miles of Blackstone Bay and area passageways. Operation runs from May to September, weather permitting, and they have departures each day at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. We chose the 2 p.m.
absolutely love the quote on their website. The best dreams happen when you're awake. And this adventure was certainly a dream come true for us. recommend is the Portage Pass Trail. Maybe not doing it right after jet skiing for four hours, but definitely a great trail. They say the Portage Pass Trail dates back over 10,000 years. Now the short but steep out and back trail is located right before the tunnel entrance before leaving town. At the top, you'll see beautiful views of glaciers, lakes, the harbor, and sweeping meadows full of tundra vegetation. But don't forget your bug spray. The pests are plentiful. We started our day out by eating breakfast at the Fire Island Rustic Bake Shop in Anchorage. They have a few locations so you can check out their website to see which one works best for you. We really enjoyed our delicious breakfast there. I had a breakfast sandwich there that was fabulous. We also got some ham and cheese croissants to go and we took them along in the ride to eat later for lunch. While we were in Girdwood, we had to stop at the bake shop. They serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they are known for their sweet rolls, which we highly, highly recommend. And we won't judge you if you ask for extra icing, because we did. We did get ours to go, and it was such a nice treat to eat that evening on our way back to Anchorage. Now for dinner, we ate in Whittier at the Swiftwater Seafood Cafe. It's a quaint little place located right by the water. I would really recommend the fried halibut, but they also have other offerings if you aren't into seafood. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. The next video in our Alaska Travel Series will be highlighting Kenai Fjords National Park in Seward, Alaska. If you'd like to be notified when that gets uploaded, just click the bell icon. Until next time, bye! bye. snowy Ohio and we're excited to announce a new trip planning series that we're going to start sharing on YouTube.